Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I want to talk to you about probiotics and fermented foods. Which is better? I'm going to give you the answer very very quickly. The answer is fermented foods. That's everything for today's video. I'll see you in the next one. Just kidding. This is true, however there's more complexity to, to a situation like this. I will say, I will just give you the answer. If you can do fermented foods, they are better. Generally speaking, they are better. They're the better option. But maybe you can't. Maybe you can't tolerate fermented foods. Maybe you have problems and that's why probiotics exist. That's exactly what they're for. And that's exactly what I'm going to help you figure out the best way to, to use them and to understand what to do in a situation like this. Fermented foods are better, but probiotics do have their place. So why are fermented foods better? That's, that's probably the best place to start. So the reason that they're better is, first of all, they're a lot cheaper. Probiotic supplements can be really expensive. And when you're looking at using actually like a decent probiotic you know if you're looking at the ones that i recommend like the custom probiotics delactate free formula or the 11 strain formula they are quite a hefty investment though i will say when you're looking at a probiotic do not just look at the price you have to take the price and divide it by the cfu count you have to see what is the cost per cfu because you'll actually find that the custom probiotics are actually very cheap when you compare cfus not just the total price to buy one also like soil based organisms saccharomyces boulardii other things they're all going to be more expensive than fermented foods and I'll also say especially if you're making them at home and I will say this because it is worth saying and it is true if you can do fermented foods at home that is even better than buying fermented foods so if you can do that there's that extra level so why are they better they, they're cheaper they are generally more potent they're stronger you can get not just a higher cfu counts but you can get increased diversity the examples in this video specifically i'm gonna i'm gonna use a probiotic versus a fermented food that you have created at home by yourself when you make a probiotic at home by yourself so when you make a, a fermented food when you make a sauerkraut or a yogurt or something like that you may start with a culture so with yogurt you will most of the time with doing something like sauerkraut or some kind of fermented food that is more vegetable based you won't be using a starter you will just be using the vegetable that you're fermenting and salt the reason that this is better is you are going to get more diversity you know the amount of different types of organisms that you're going to get in a fermented food versus a probiotic is really really significant even in the highest variety of cfu probiotics you're going to kind of max out about 50 or 60. you could be getting hundreds of different organisms when you take a wild fermented food, when you take a food that you've fermented at home by yourself. The amount of diversity that you can be getting is absolutely astronomical. And if you take that and amplify it further, if you were using a homemade kefir or kefir, for example, the amount of probiotics, not just CFUs, but also diversity is absolutely incredible. It is probably the strongest probiotic that you could possibly take. Not everybody can tolerate these though, for good reason. So you've got this extreme diversity, you've got this extremely high dose. Uh, another really important factor here when you're looking at fermented foods is they're not created in a sterile environment when you get a probiotic that is a, a supplement like a powder or a capsule these are kind of sterile in a way you're getting very much just the singular individual organisms which has benefits which i'll cover in a moment but it's more sterile and the whole reason we're taking probiotics is because we know sterility is not what we really want we're taking literally bugs we're taking bugs and putting them in our gut it's completely the opposite of sterile the thing is probiotics are created in quite a sterile environment when you do a wild fermentation when you make sauerkraut at home or e this would even be somewhat true when you're buying some fermented foods but this is especially true when you're making it at home the organisms are gonna have their own microbiome so just as a so think about this as a human you are this like one organism inside your gut you have thousands of different types of bugs inside each one of those those bacteria and those yeasts they all have this amazing diversity in their microbiome which the microbiome of these is called a, is actually called a virome and it's made of viruses if you think how big you are compared to a bacteria so you're this big bacteria is this big if you were to make a bacteria this big like you blow it up a, a virus is is this big so what bacteria do to you viruses due to bacteria it's really important that we have the correct virome in our microbiome inside of us i know it's mind-blowing concept but th this is kind of how it works this is the, kind of like the as above so below principle you know just as we as little cells as individuals form society in the world our bacteria form us and then the viruses form the bacteria they're like the little little units you miss that in a probiotic supplement you completely miss that that's something that is not even being very well researched just yet it will you'll see 10 20 years you'll see this stuff start to be researched fermented foods better than probiotic supplements because they have a virome and blah 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 you'll see 
see it, but we're well ahead of our time here. So you're, you're getting the, the good stuff if you're watching this. There's this extra factor. There's also other factors that you have to consider too. And these are primarily what you would call postbiotic substances. So these are, you would consider these to be sort of substances that are in a way, like I'm not trying to make it gross. Like they're like, they're like bacteria poo, kind of. There's no kind of, they they are. That is literally what it is. But this sounds bad, but it's actually it's actually very cool. You've probably heard of several different types of supplements that are actually postbiotics. So for example, there's like Pylogard, which is a H. pylori supplement. This is a postbiotic. There is Butyrate. If you've ever taken like Tributyrin X or any kind of Butyrate supplement, this is a postbiotic. So these are things that are not prebiotics. They're not probiotics. They're not living, but they're things that have been produced by probiotic organisms. When you take fermented foods, you're not just eating the first life cycle you're eating hundreds or even thousands of life cycles of organisms that have lived in that fermented food and they've produced a bunch of different postbiotic substances i gave you two examples these two products but this in, this also includes a whole bunch of things that is a list too long to list and there's also many substances that have not even been isolated and identified correctly yet but these substances are antibacterial they're antiviral they're anti-yeast they're antimicrobial they're antiparasitic this is one reason fermented foods are so much stronger is it's not just the organisms it's an accumulation of all of these postbiotic substances that have been produced this can also include other things like lactic acid this is why sauerkraut is called sauerkraut sour cabbage the reason it goes sour is it's fermented and the postbiotic substance is lactic acid that is what makes it acidic lactic acid has been proven to be really helpful in changing your microbiome the ph of your stomach and the ph of your intestine it actually changes all the way through your intestine the lactic acid in the food that you eat will change this i've seen studies where people are able to um, improve i believe this was a section in the gaps book using lactic acid to help with diarrhea to help to form stools or to re reduce the amount of water in the stools these other postbiotic substances have a significant impact not just your microbiome but also your health and your overall health outcomes so you've got all of these extra factors which mean these things are are better icing on the cake the last thing i'll just give you one example if you take cabbage and you look at how much vitamin c is in cabbage i don't know off the top of my head let's say it's five molecules of vitamin c and 100 grams of cabbage it's not but let's use it as an example if you were to get that same cabbage and ferment it into sauerkraut the amount of vitamin c in it is increased by 10 times which means making the vitamin c more bioavailable and these organisms are actually producing vitamin c also as a postbiotic substance there's a lot of things in foods a lot of minerals and things that are actually not usable by the body for example people say that oh maybe spinach is a really good source of calcium however this is really bound to oxalate and this means it's not absorbable fermenting will break oxalate down it will remove that oxalate and it will make that calcium bioavailable so your body can actually use it this is like a form of pre-digestion it's letting the bacteria do it for you this is crazy the amount of things that are produced that are helpful in your body these things that can be helpful can also be i don't want to say harmful because so for example histamine when you make fermented foods you will increase the histamine in that food histamine in itself is not bad histamine is actually an essential neurotransmitter you're producing some now and some now and some now like you need it your brain is producing it your body is producing it having it in food is actually a postbiotic substance this is another example so even if you get a food that has no histamine in it so for example like let's say carrots if you were to ferment this down the bacteria will start to produce histamine as one of these things histamine is actually a very powerful detoxifier it's extremely good at helping your body clean itself this is one reason a lot of people that have histamine intolerance have histamine intolerance is because they're actually full of toxin and the body is completely overwhelmed with the primary detoxification systems and these backup systems are kicking in to try and keep you alive and to try and clean your body but then you can't handle that excess histamine because it causes these really big basically cleansing reactions it's not good to be stuck in a histamine reaction because it puts your body completely out of balance you know histamine does have these detoxification functions but it's also a neurotransmitter it also affects your stomach acid secretions it can affect your mood you know people can go into psychosis or experience suicidal depression like like me like how i used to and that's not good that's not i'm not i'm not saying eat your high histamine foods it's a good detox i'm not saying do that you have to understand this molecule is not bad in, in itself but this is one reason that probiotics can be really helpful so that kind of wraps up the benefits of like why fermented foods are actually so much more superior to probiotics but because they are so powerful 
you may find that it's not something you can handle just yet. This is where probiotics come in. If you can't tolerate a fermented food because it is too powerful or it has histamine in it or it has another compound or something, you can't tolerate maybe fermented foods, it's is dairy and yogurt, maybe you don't tolerate dairy. This is where probiotics come in nicely because you can still get the benefit of probiotics and, and start to shift that microbiome because if you have histamine problems, if you have dairy intolerance, you have a microbiome imbalance. Food sensitivities at stage one are born from a gut dysbiosis, from gut damage and then microbiome imbalance. You can never correct a microbiome imbalance without probiotics. It's literally not possible. You need to increase diversity to improve balance. How are you going to improve diversity if you don't add new organisms in? The reason probiotics are really nice is you can kind of use them to start moving this process ahead without having to be exposed to these extremely high levels of histamine or even these cleansing molecules. Another thing is you will get improved bioflavonoid content. This is the same with the vitamin C, but apply that to different bioflavonoids, citrus bioflavonoids, the things that like antioxidants and things, it will amplify all of these making these fermented foods. This could be too much for your body. Your body po probably cannot handle all the polyphenols. It's, it's too much. So we can use probiotics to start to change this situation. So generally speaking, a really nice safe option is to start working with some lactobacillus and bifidobacterium organisms. The reason that these make so much sense, and this is why I see them as almost always applicable as a use case is, if you look at a good probiotic like the one I'm talking about here, so this would be the D-lactate free custom probiotics or the 11 strain formula by custom probiotics. So you've got five or six strains in one and 11 in the other. I saw a study where they went around the world. This sounds actually really funny. Like imagine, imagine saying this, like I'm going to go around the world and I'm going to go to where all of the people live to a really long age and I'm going to collect their poo and I'm going to look at it. Sounds funny, but that's what they did. So they traveled around the world. They went to all the all these, I believe they're called blue zones. So these are areas where you have people that are living to 100 years old and they're really healthy. And they looked at their microbiomes. First of all, everyone has significant diversity. We're talking like 2,000, 2,500 plus different species of organisms of just what we're able to identify now. I'm sure that we will find plenty more bacteria and yeasts and fungi and protozoa and all these different things that we can't even categorize just yet. But Diversity was a key. So this is kind of amplifying the point that I was talking about earlier. Diversity is key. But one step further than that is they looked at, okay, what do all of these microbiomes have in common? First was diversity. But the second was there was about 17 or 18 strains that every single culture had. This was the Inuit in Antarctica who are just eating meat and fat. This is people in, in India who are eating more predominantly more of a vegetarian diet, having a little bit of meat occasionally and like some, some cheese and stuff like that. People around in the Mediterranean. This is people from all over the world. They all had the same 18 organisms and these were lactobacillus and bifidobacterium and these are the same organisms that are found in the delactate free custom probiotics and the 11 strain formula this is why it is basically a universal beneficial probiotic because every single culture on earth had these organisms in their gut every single one you can't really go wrong by putting these in they're going that these are essential every single healthy culture had these so you should probably have them too having that much diversity at first can be a problem and in that case you can look at doing a single strain instead the dose is the key with probiotics. If you find that you're intolerant, so if you have histamine issues, if, if you take a probiotic and you have a really severe reaction, you need to control for two variables. You need to control for the dose and you need to control for the total strains on the probiotic that you're taking. Ideally, the D-lactate free formula is, I would say works for about 70% of people. So if you can do that one, that's good because you're getting some diversity in there. You just need to start on a tiny, tiny dose. If you don't know how to dose this, go on YouTube and check out my video called the Goldilocks Zone. So you can just literally search my name, William Dickinson, the Goldilocks zone. It explains to you how to find your optimal dose of probiotics to help you heal instead of just giving you Herxheimer reactions and detox reactions and making you feel really, really bad. Once you understand that concept, you will never be able to forget it. It will change your life forever. It will completely change everything. It is a it is a monumental mindset shift. You can also control for strains. So if even a really tiny, tiny, tiny dose, if you're trying to do the Goldilocks zone, as I, as I said, and you're doing a tiny dose, even if this five or six strain formula is too much, we try one strain instead. So we can look at using something like Bifidobacterium longum or Bifidobacterium infantis. These are two really, really gentle ones. If you're still having a problem with this, we could look at trying something different. There's a different angle of attack here. Before we try this, we could try using some soil based organisms. So this would be like your Bacillus subtilis or your Bacillus coagulans or something like this, Bacillus clausii. These are organisms that are generally found in soil. So these are called soil based organisms. They're different, they're not colonizing. They're not gonna come and inhabit your digestive system. They're gonna come in, they're gonna do some work and they're gonna pass. They're kind of like contractors. You hire them for a little time and then they go on their way. These can help because they start to shift what dysbiosis you have, but they do not replace it. Just using soy-based organisms is not like a long-term game plan, but you can use them to kind of clean some space 
So then you can, when you do introduce the lactobacillus or the bifidobacterium, the core strains of your microbiome, you don't have such a severe reaction and you're able to begin a colonization process without such severe reactions. So as you can see, this is fairly nuanced. Almost without exception, fermented foods are better in basically every way apart from in the ways that they're not better, which are, there's a lot more variability, they're a lot harder to control. You know, when you're working with something like your Goldilocks zone, your, your zone where you're really trying to find like, this is where I'm, this is where I can be healthy, and your zone is like whoop, 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 and you're like moving in and out of it, and you're like, oh, now I'm having a reaction. Oh, now I feel fantastic. Oh, now I'm not healing very quickly. Oh, now I'm having a reaction. Oh, now I feel really good. It can be really, really hard to navigate that. Probiotics can be great for that because they are very standardized. They're very specific in the dosage, so you can control that very easily, and that makes it easier to build your dose up gradually, keeping yourself in that healing zone. Once you build your probiotics up and you're trying to do this transition to fermented foods, it can be really nice to start to make fermented foods of foods that you have intolerances to. If you're struggling with onions and garlic, for example, say you struggle with those FODMAP foods, you can ferment some some sauerkraut or some other vegetables that you tolerate, maybe carrots, maybe beetroot, something, put some onions and garlic in there and it will change the organisms that grow and you will start to inoculate your microbiome with organisms that can eat onions and garlic. And then your tolerance to those foods, both cooked and raw, gradually will begin to increase over time. If you can do fermented foods, then do. If you can't, start with probiotics and increase that dose very gradually, very gently uh, until you are able to. So that's everything for today. Hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it helpful. If you do have any questions, let me know. Take care. Let me know if you learned anything. Let me know how this video was for you. Happy healing. Enjoy your probiotics. Enjoy your sauerkraut and your, your yogurt and your fermented foods. And even wine is a probiotic, so enjoy your wine, but do it responsibly. <laughs> Take care.